Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over the case of baby Alex. This is a hard one, so if you are sensitive to this topic and you can tell by my thumbnail, you might want to skip this one. It wasn't easy to make. It wasn't easy to research. The clips and the photos you're about to see are not easy to see. Baby Alex was born January 27th, 2023 at about 1.40 in the morning to Alexi Treviso. This is where they're from, Artesia, New Mexico. Very pretty town. New Mexico's gorgeous with scenery. You've probably heard of the annual balloon festival. They put on several each year, really pretty area. So this is where Alexi Treviso is from, born and raised. And this is her right here. Alexi is 19. She's had her boyfriend there for the last two or three years. All accounts, a normal senior in high school. She was 19. She was held back earlier in her years, which is not uncommon. She had a grade point average of 3.86. She was super active in choir and she was an avid cheerleader. This is her and her squad. I know cheerleaders practice a lot and put in a lot of hours in practice. My daughter just started cheer and there are, they, they put in a lot of hours. She was registered already. Her, she had her eyes set on going to the state of New Mexico for college, New Mexico State University. She had no prior issues at all, legally speaking. She had never been in trouble, had a lot of friends. Everything seemed to be going good for her. However, Alexi became pregnant in her senior year. Reportedly, she didn't tell anybody, although a few of her close friends have come forward and said that, that she knew she had even named this baby, but she hadn't told her mother or her boyfriend and anybody else. However, what do you think looking at these photos? I don't see how people didn't ask her straight up, what is going on? How did she get through the entire year of cheer without having to at least replace her uniform? Did she never go to the doctor that whole year? I don't understand. But she was out here doing her cheer thing the entire pregnancy, y'all. Look at that, the baby bump. Here's another section of footage here. You can see her right there. And look at the belly bump. I don't understand how she never knew. And she kept it from almost everybody the entire time. I just don't get it. I'm stunned. I'm still stunned even looking at these photos after the you know 20th time. How nobody knew or said anything. This is her Christmas of 2022. She doesn't look like an obviously eight plus month pregnant woman. However, she was hiding it. She was hiding it very well. But even if you're hiding the outward appearance and or, or you're claiming that you just don't know, right? Because that's her story that she did not know. Can you really tell me that this girl never felt her baby kicking and moving, stretching as they do? She never saw the little foot or elbow go across the top of her belly and move 
every one of us who have been pregnant have seen the little elbow move under the skin of our belly and, and watched our, our belly literally move around as they're stretching and turning and feeling all those kicks all over the place. I remember very well. She really expects everybody to believe that she never felt any of that. Come on. This is not her ultrasound, by the way. It's just to show you a baby kicking around in there, which we do feel. Maybe not at first, the flutters, but she was full term when she went to the hospital. On January 26th, almost midnight, so January 27th, her mom took her to the hospital for lower back pain. The doctors did all the normal initial questions and did a urine test and told her that she was pregnant. She denied even there being a possibility of being pregnant, so they took her blood work and sent it to the lab. While waiting, she said she needed to go to the bathroom, so they allowed her to go. A minute later, her mom came right after, at pretty much the time that we've discovered that birth was occurring. But instead of yelling for help, pulling the emergency cord, she did nothing to help herself and her baby. Instead, she put the baby in a trash bag, twisted it, and then laid it twisty side down in the bottom of the bag. Then she put paper towels and a new liner and everything on top of it. This whole 20 minutes, she never yelled for help. In fact, they came to the door at least three times during this segment and asked her, are you okay? Do you need help? What's going on? And she turned everybody away. But the staff could hear the toilet flushing over and over, the sink running. They never heard her cry out in pain or anything, which is weird, right? How did she give birth silently? I don't get that. But after 20 minutes, they finally were going to come in with the key. And that is when she walked out of the room. But during that 20 minutes, and I'll show you that clip as well. This is what I kind of have in my mind. So this is a viewpoint. Can you imagine? You can't see, you can't breathe, you can't move, you can't help yourself. Ugh. So yeah, this is the point where she finally comes out of the bathroom after he says we're coming in with the key. When she comes out of this bathroom, you'll see her walk down the hall, throw away a tissue in this trash can down here. Here she comes. Oh, I just saw, she said, I'm just on my period. That's why there's blood all over the bathroom and the wall and the toilet. Uh-huh, okay. Not, oh my God, look what just happened. Somebody help me help this baby. Nothing. She just went back to her room and pretended that none of that happened. So, housekeeping was called, and you could she was she came in and out of the bathroom cleaning. She cleaned the whole hallway. Alexi had literally left steps of blood from the bathroom to the end of this hallway, right underneath the camera view. To the left is where her her broom was. There were bloody footprints all the way down. She saw this infant in the bottom of the trash and called out for help. This was the moment that that poor housekeeper and all of these other employees had to see what was going on in the bottom of the trash. So there she is, she's checking it out. She's like, you know, she said she she wasn't even really sure what it was at first because she could see purple and all that, right? So she called for more assistance. The doctor comes running and this is really hard to watch. 
knowing what was in that trash can. So the doctor checks him out. Can, he can see that there's obviously nothing that he can do. And this poor housekeeper is just pacing like, what is happening? Did this really happen? What is going on? So they come back. She moves the cart out of the way. And they're being told to take the baby and the trash can into trauma room two. Here is an actual photo. It is blurred. So after this discovery, they did go into the room with law enforcement and the charge nurse and the doctor and let her know they found the baby. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. That's funny. They came out and me and I didn't know what to do. Lexi, I told you about this. But I was... just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. It was not crying or making. What did you do to it? Okay, stop right here. I stop, stop. It stop. It Number one priority, guys. Number one priority. Is she just had a baby? I don't know if she's delivered the placenta. She's bleeding significantly. Yeah. I've spoken to the obstetrician at Loveless. They want her up there as soon as possible. Okay. I need, I need your, I just need your permission to transfer her for medical. To, she is she's to, 19. Oh, you're right. You, but you, she you, is a student, too. She's not still a my teacher. You're right. You, you're right. She is to, I'm sorry, I forgot she's 19. Keep out of me. So don't even get me started on the mother. I'm going to try to withhold what I think. But if Alexi would have just pulled the cord, if she would have just yelled for help, this story would have had an entirely different ending. But she didn't. And Mama, sorry to say, very coddling to her. And I'm going to leave it at that. But because she didn't accept any help that was being offered outside that room, the bathroom, and because she hid what she did and suffocated that poor innocent newborn, this is the end that that poor baby had. This is a photo from his little baby body bag. It's awful. They began investigating immediately. She was released. In the meantime, it took three months of interviews and investigation. In the meantime, she went to her prom with the same boyfriend. Out of sight, out of mind, right? It was kind of controversial for her to do that, but she did it anyway. So four months later, she was finally charged with murder and the concealment of the baby. I'm going to read some of this information in a little bit. I'll read what's going on the case status in just a moment. This is a photo of the inside of the home on the day that she was arrested. If you look to the left, the little framed object. Do you see the name Alex? I can't make out what all's there. It appears to be maybe a photo of the baby. I'm not sure. But it says Alex, which is the name that she was telling friends she was going to give the baby that she was hiding from almost everybody. I heard that the, the baby was cremated, but I don't know. I've looked and I can't find any definitive proof of a funeral. Or anything I don't know all right so here's the day that she was arrested 
This was May 10th of this year. She was charged with first degree murder and tampering with evidence. Later, they had added another little charge or an al alternative option. I'm going to go over those in just a little bit. Her attorney has not only filed motions to suppress, but motions for her to be allowed to leave the state, um, allowed to um, go to the same college as the boyfriend, but they're also suing the hospital as well at this point which I find utterly disgusting. She is out on bond. She is not living in New Mexico. They did allow her to go elsewhere, and I'm not going to say where. Um, but yeah, they're suing the hospital now. I'm going to show that document. What infuriates me more than anything is this hospital getting sued when they were right there willing and able to help. It was a safe haven hospital. She could have just said, hey, I just gave birth in the bathroom. I don't want it. I'm out of here. She could have done that and she would have been totally fine. But instead, she suffocated her newborn, hid him in the trash, and walked out of there like he'd never existed. And now they have the nerve to do this. Look at the top there. They named the baby in the matter of Alex Ray Fierro. Named this child after the boyfriend. Gave him a middle name, full name, everything. I just, I just can't, y'all. I just can't. They're suing the hospital. This hospital is a safe haven hospital, by the way. She could have walked out of that bathroom or wherever and said, I just gave birth to a child. I don't want it. And they would have picked up that baby and taken care of him. He would have been just fine. She's the one who wrapped him in that trash and walked away like he never existed and then went to the prom. And now she's suing the hospital for wrongful death of her baby. Are you freaking kidding me? And that's the nicest way that I could put it. So yeah, there's that going on in addition to her criminal trial coming up. They're claiming in this lawsuit that the hospital never told her that she was pregnant, so it's their fault what she did. Her, her lawyer, who, um, forgive me for being rude, but he looks like he chases ambulances and has a hidden camera in his bathroom or something. He looks really weird to me. But anyway, here's what he said about the baby. At what point, because we bring it back to the fact that she goes to the bathroom to deliver this child. At, at what point did the hospital know she was pregnant? At what point did she know she was pregnant? She knew she, they knew she was pregnant at 12.51, 51 minutes after midnight. They did not tell her. She did not know she was pregnant until she uh, uh, had the baby at uh, 139, 140 in the bathroom. That's when she first learned that she was giving birth. He said it, she gave birth. But that hospital is adamantly stating, and it is already proven, that she was told, you were pregnant, and she said, no, I can't be, I'm a virgin, because her mama was standing in the room. That whole dynamic is just awful as well. But she's suing the hospital, the very place that was there to help her, asking her, do you need help, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine, just having trouble going to the bathroom. Liar. So this is the current status of the case. There is a pretrial hearing scheduled for January 2nd. Her jury trial is scheduled to begin February 1st, 2024. This new motion was just filed and there is a motion hearing on August 22nd. So I will be providing an update on that. Her attorney is trying to suppress evidence that has been given, submitted to the judge, to the court, and they're also trying to change up the existing orders allowing her to go live back in New Mexico with her boyfriend.
It's insanity. She doesn't care about anybody but herself. I'll just say it that way. And her mom doesn't care about anything but her. I get that, but no. If my kid did something like that, I'd be on the state side. Sorry. They would not be my kid anymore. It is so sad. This poor baby, Alex, did not have a chance with a family like that. It's heartbreaking. It is such a complex, heartbreaking case. But I'm going to make myself follow it and let you guys know what happens on August 22nd, 20 days from now. I just, I have nothing else to say about this girl other than she makes my skin crawl. Teenager stuff aside, she was an adult. I was a mother at her age. I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't. No. And I was a surprise mama as well. But not full term. I was five months. But anyway, we're not going to get into that. I will see you back when I have any other updates on this case. Let me know what you think of everything that's happened in this case. It's mind-boggling to me. I still can't wrap my head around any of it. She had help right there. I don't understand why she really thought she was going to walk out of that bathroom and go home and go on with her life like, like Alex never existed. But you know what? He did. He did exist, Alexi. And you did him wrong. Oh, and by the way, that reminds me. Mom... Rosa has been going around social media making comments on posts and videos that people are making about this. Bring it on, girl. You want to have a good conversation with me, mother to mother, you know what, grandmother to grandmother, because that's what you were? I'll talk to you. You make it make sense for me. How are you making this okay? But anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good afternoon. Sorry for my attitude today this really this really hurts my heart I don't even want to say this but go ahead and hit the like button for me on this video it helps me go up on the algorithm so more people can see the work that I'm doing if you haven't subscribed yet please do thank you so much